Hello, welcome to my channel. I don't like the part where I have to say hi to the camera. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name's Jen, this is Momming with Migraine. In an effort to figure out what the heck is going on in my body, I am putting together all sorts of pieces on my channel. Thanks to you guys, by the way, for all of your help. This video is long time coming because we've talked about hypermobility a lot, but I haven't seriously addressed it in its own dedicated video. So this is going to be a video about generalized joint hypermobility, which is what I have, and we're specifically going to talk about the Byton score for assessing joint hypermobility. Am I talking like a million miles an hour? So, I was about to make this YouTube and I was like, I don't know how to pronounce this word. Is it Byton or is it Baton? So I YouTubed it and some people are saying Byton and some people are saying Baton. So I arbitrarily went with Byton. Sometimes English be like that. Okay, so Byton score. The Byton score is a really simple test that the doctors can use to determine your joint laxity and your hypermobility. It's a really simple system where the higher your score, the more hypermobile you are, and it's a score out of nine. Since this test only assesses a select few of your joints, it's really not that great for assessing certain hypermobility areas, like your shoulder or like TMJ, if you have joint specific hypermobility problems, this test is not gonna be helpful at all. And that's not the only limitation of the test, but it's a big one. This is a really simple and crude test for generalized joint hypermobility. Getting assessed for your Byton score can be part of being diagnosed with EDS, but this score alone does not diagnose you with anything like HSD or EDS. This is not the only test used to diagnose EDS, so having a high Byton score doesn't necessarily mean that you automatically have EDS. It's just a really simple way to quantify how much your joints can move. Let's go over what the five pieces of the test are. What I'm gonna show you is not the absolute proper way to do it in the doctor's office where your shoulder is exactly at the right angle and your elbow and all that. I'm just telling you guys the basics of what the five test maneuver things are, okay? So, first one is your arm flat and your pinky gets bent up. And when your arm is on a flat surface, if your pinky goes to 90 degrees or past 90 degrees, then that's a positive score for this test. You do that for each hand, one and one makes two points total that you can earn on this test. Earn, like, like it's money. Congratulations, you earned two points. No, these are not points that you want. <laughs> the second test is your elbows. You straighten your elbows, and if your elbow can go past straight by 10 degrees or more, then that's a positive test. One point for your left elbow and one for the right makes two more points possible for this part of the test. Byton criteria test number three is your knees. The test is to see if your knees can bend backwards by 10 degrees or more, and if they do, then that's a positive test. One point for each leg, just like before. This one's harder to test by yourself, but you can sort of look on your own by sitting down flat on the floor with your legs out in front of you, just like you're about to do DPT with your service dog. If you're able to flex your thighs to lift up your feet so that your heels actually come off the floor, hyperextending your knees that way, that's probably a pretty good indicator that you're gonna have positive points for that, for your Byton score. Especially if you can do it with your toes pointed, not just with your toes flexed. Let me show you. If this breaks because I sat on it, at least I got it on film. If I squeeze my legs, my heels come up off the table. It's very obvious if they're flexed, but they stay off if they're pointed. But remember, that's the power of my own muscles. So when a doctor is doing it and a doctor is applying that backwards pressure, that's how you have to hit that 10 degree criteria. One more point for each leg means we're at six points possible now that you can be at for the test. Test number four, the classic, thumb to forearm. Does your thumb go to your forearm? I think that when you officially do the test, your arm is out, you turn it, and it has to go this way, maybe? I can't remember, but one point for each hand that touches your forearm, that brings us up to eight points. So the final test. The final test is a very simple, if you stand with your feet flat on the floor and your legs straight, can you fold in half and get your hands flat on the floor in front of your feet without bending your knees? 
Don't tell anyone that I did that. <laughs> if your hands can go flat on the floor, then that's a positive, and that is your final ninth point. So, nine points possible. What's the cutoff? Originally, four points was the cutoff for being considered generally hypermobile. I think it's G, J, M, generalized joint, or no, mobility. G, J, H, generalized joint hypermobility. But that doesn't account for a lot of things like age, sex, race, and the differences that those can introduce. So some places go by a score of six or more to be hypermobile, some go by four or more. For children ages six to 12, the cutoff is seven or more. Children, of course, are more flexible than adults. And honestly, that's just the one place that I read, so it's possible that your doctor or someone else might be doing a completely different test or a completely different score. Don't take this as medical advice, this is just for entertainment. You probably have an idea of what my Biden score is because you watched me do the tests. But when I officially did this test with a doctor, my score was seven out of nine. That is above the cutoff of four to be considered generally hypermobile. That is also above the stricter cutoff of six that some doctors use. And I even made the children's cutoff of seven to be considered generally hypermobile. The only two points that I lost are for my elbows because my elbows don't straighten all the way. I know that's weird, but I did get a positive score for every single other test. I have a couple more things to tell you before I get out of your hair. One is that it is totally possible to be hypermobile, but also be very stiff. You don't have to be generally flexible in order to have joint hypermobility. In fact, sometimes the fact that your joints do tend to slide too much can cause your muscles to stiffen to try to protect that joint. And then you can end up with stiffness from your hypermobility, thereby making you not flexible because you're too flexible. Tis the problem with my neck, which I am dying to tell you guys about. I have something big to tell you guys about the second vertebrae of my neck. It's coming. Make sure you're subscribed. Hit the notification bell. But for right now, I just wanted to leave it at that. You can totally be hypermobile, but not be flexible. And something to read. In most people, hypermobility does not cause any pain or any issues, but in some people, it can cause joint pain, joint and ligament injuries, tiredness, fatigue, bowel issues, and other symptoms. It can cause a range of symptoms that can often affect many parts of the body. The symptoms range from mild to severe and can have a great impact on someone's life. So while it does seem really fun to do party tricks and to be really flexible, and it seems like something that's innocent enough, it can actually cause huge problems and even be disabling for the people who are going through it. I have tons of symptoms from my hypermobility, some directly and some, I think, indirectly. And I'm still discovering connections all the time. For example, your connective tissue plays a role in inflammation. So if you have hypermobile joints, you might be getting too much inflammation. Don't quote me on that, but my point is just that the implications can reach much further than what meets the eye. Well, that's it for today. More to come later. Please do keep chiming in in the comments below. I'll see you guys next time.